What up Randys? My name is Stan and today we're taking a look at probably my most requested video of last year. Yep, another Pokemon movie. Now, I've decided to review this one because whether good, bad, or just plain ugly, a lot of you really requested my input on this film now that it has an English release. So what did I think of this one? Well, I guess you're just gonna have to wait and see. But for now, here's my review of Pokemon the movie, Hoopa and the Clash of Ages. Set during the events of the X and Y anime, the 18th movie in the Pokemon series finds Ash and companions at a Pokemon Center in a desert part of Kalos. After some mischievous circumstances, Ash and Pikachu meet Hoopa, a mythical Pokemon who uses its rings to bend space and time itself. Through a few misunderstandings, Ash and company eventually meet both Murray and Baraz, a brother and sister duo who act as Hoopa's de facto guardians. The two reveal that a hundred years ago, Hoopa magically appeared and began wreaking havoc on nearby villages in order to test its strength against many legendary Pokémon. Eventually, Murray and Baraz's great-grandfather sealed Hoopa's dark side in a magic bottle, but after yet another Team Rocket mess-up, the dark entity, known as Shadow, begins causing chaos again. It's now up to Ash and Hoopa to take on the genie Pokémon's powerful doppelganger in a battle that will break space and time itself in order to bring forth handfuls of legendary Pokémon for one final showdown. Overall, the plot of the film is your pretty standard Pokémon story. Ash meets legendary Pokémon, Ash bonds with legendary Pokémon, Ash helps legendary Pokémon to overcome some sort of adversity, and they all live happily ever after. The film really doesn't spice things up very much, but I will say that using Hoopa's powers as a sort of catalyst really allows the movie to take full advantage of buckets of fan service while still making total sense within the rules it creates. It also sort of complements my Arceus and Ash theory from my top 5 best Pokemon movies video, and besides one really dumb move, seriously Ash, you're going to attack a metaphysical rift in time and space with something tangible like Thunderbolt? You couldn't even use Thunder? Most of the characters ask important questions and make rational decisions, which is sort of a rarity within these movies. But at its core, this is still a Pokemon movie, and for the most part, they've always been more eye candy than riveting fiction. So, let's get into the spectacle. This is the part of the review where I discuss things like visuals and music, and I have to say that in terms of these two, Hoopa and the Clash of Ages is above average. Now it's no Studio Ghibli movie, that's for sure, but I thought the visuals and animation were a much needed improvement over its Diancie predecessor, and I felt the action scenes were done really well. I particularly enjoyed the tactical ways Hoopa's evil shadow would use its rings, because it allowed for some really creative sequences that surprisingly left me wanting more. I also thought the night spectacle in the sky, with all of the legendary Pokémon battling, was handled well and with some weight, which actually got me excited in certain moments to see some of my favorite legendaries duking it out. Although seriously, Rayquaza, of all the Pokémon there, you, you gotta take on the one friggin' ice type? It's like what, quadruple effective? Sheesh, you're lucky to still be alive. I should also mention that the desert setting works in this film's favor. I don't think at this point we've actually seen a movie with this type of atmosphere, so at the very least it stands out as original. The desert setting also clearly had some influence on the music, as it oftentimes sounds like traditional Pokemon themes with touches of the Aladdin score. The Middle Eastern influenced soundtrack once again helps give this film a sense of identity, which is sort of a huge deal considering we're 18 movies in at this point. I will say though that overall the music is just sort of average, and once again in places the film can feel sort of like a special episode of the television series. It does its job, I just think films like Pokemon Heroes and the original Mewtwo Strikes Back were able to elevate their films because of their scores, which this movie's soundtrack doesn't really do. Also, the ending theme Tweedia by Rei Yasuda is actually a really strong closer and definitely the best song in the film. In terms of the best character, I'm actually going to give this one to Hoopa, and not because it's groundbreaking, heck, I don't even think I really liked Hoopa, but there's no denying that if Hoopa doesn't work here, the film falls apart, and between the two forms and the creative ring techniques I mentioned earlier, I feel comfortable saying that Hoopa was the most memorable character. Also, for those of you getting your comments ready, just remember, originally Hoopa was going to sound like this. 
<laughs> Did I scare you? Oh, who are you? The mysterious Pokemon appearing before Ash is... I'm Hoopa. Uh, yeah, the English dub team actually listened to the feedback and changed some stuff due to internet backlash. So compared to that Hoopa, this one's definitely not so bad. As for the best moment, call it a cop-out, but I really did like it when seven legendary Pokemon attacked Ash and his team at once, only for the smoke to clear and three legendaries Mega evolving. And it actually even made sense because of Rayquaza's weird link with Mega Evolution. Hoopa and the Clash of Ages certainly isn't for everyone. You're not going to find a complex storyline like Pokemon 3, and if you dislike Hoopa as a character, you're going to hate this film. But with some creative sequences, tons of Gen 3 fan service, and some original set pieces, the 18th movie in the Pokemon series plays it safe and mostly gets it right. If you love the Oras, that is Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby lineup of games, then you'll probably love this film, and if you don't, then you'll probably be better off waiting to catch it on Netflix or something if and when it's made available on a streaming service. For those reasons, I'm awarding Hoopa and the Clash of Ages a B. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but if you enjoyed this review and want to see more like it, then please feel free to subscribe. And make sure you let me know what your favorite Pokemon movie is in the comment section below. And now that I have a template in place, I'd like to hear your suggestions for more anime and game related reviews. Could be anything from Pokemon to One Punch Man. Just let me know. And before I go, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this review. I am super hyped for Pokemon's 20th anniversary celebration. And as I always say, happy hunting, baby rhinos. Yeah.